Okay, record will reflect. Jury's back in the courtroom. Sorry for the delay, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for your patience. Call your next witness. You all be seated. Hi, come on through there. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the testimony you will now give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Be seated. Could you please state your name? Ashley Shaw. And if you, you can scoot your seat up if you want, so you don't have to keep leaning forward. Okay. okay. Uh, back in June of 2017, where were you employed at? Essentia Spa. And who was your boss at that? Uh, Lindley Rennick. And do you see her here in court today? I do. She's over there. Could you indicate which, which of the, the... The one in the middle of the three women who are sitting over there. Your Honor, would the record reflect that the witness identified the defendant? Record is so reflect. Could you tell the jury how it is you knew Ad, uh, Lindley? She was my boss. Well, how, uh, prior, how did you guys know? We worked you... together prior at, an, at another spa. And, and when did this... The spa you were working at, employed by her, that was the name of that spa? I, I sent just spa. And where was that located at? Columbia, Missouri. And, and when did that business open? Um, I believe May of 2016. And what were your jobs at that spa? I was a spa manager and front desk receptionist. You, you weren't one of the clinicians, I guess. Right. I helped with business operations. The books, if you will. Yes. Okay. And. Prior to that date, how long had you known Lindley? Um, a couple of years, I think. And I'm going to ask you a name, Rachel Hunt. Did, did you know that individual? Not before I started working there, no. Not before you started at? Essentia Spa. I met her at Essentia Spa. Okay, and, and, but you did know her? Yes, through the spa, yes. Okay, and, and who was Rachel Hunt? She was a friend of mine and a coworker. Okay, and ultimately, I think the two of you began Look together. She was a roommate of mine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, you mentioned that you worked for Lindley. Did the two of you at work or discuss some of your personal uh, issues, life, things of that nature? We did. Yes. And it's and, and was Lindley married when you knew her? Yes. And who was her husband? Ben Rennick. And did they have kids? Yes. Do you remember the names? Um. Emma is her daughter, and then she had a son prior, um, Matthew, I think is his name. And do you remember the ages of these children about the time we're talking, June 2017? Um, at that time, um, maybe Emma was four and Matthew was, I don't know, eight or nine, I'm not positive. But they were, they were young kids. Yeah. And at some point in time, did you and Aunt, uh, Lindley begin speaking uh, at some time about Lindley's marriage? Yes. And who or how is it that you began speaking with Lindley about, I guess, the state of her marriage? Um, she would start making comments about they would get in arguments or um, just little fights that they got in was how it started. I'm sorry? Like little arguments they would get in or um, different disputes or things that was going on at home is kind of where it started at. Just kind of sometimes a little bit of just common things a lot of people have complaints about their spouses. Yes. Uh, during the same time frame, what was the financial status leading up to June of 2017 the spa? Um, the spa, it sh there wasn't enough money to pay employees or um, pay a lot of the bills. There was a lot of bill collectors calling and the landlord showing up um, to collect rent. And, and as <coughs> being involved in the books, did, did you see where some of the problems with the financials were occurring at? Yes. And, and can you tell the jury where you felt the financials were occurring at? Um, a lot of money was being allocated to advertising, um, and so that was taking up probably the money that should have been used for other other things. And who was handling the advertising for the spa? Eric Bremer. And did you know Eric Bremer at the time? Through the spa, yes. Okay. And were you aware of whether he and uh, Lindley were engaged in an extramarital affair? Yes. And, and who, who told you about that? Lindley told me about it. And was he also a frequent visitor to the spa not for, for work and pleasure, if you will? Yes, sir. And uh, were you aware during the same time frame of June of 2017, Lindley engaging or beginning another uh, sexual affair? Yes. And, and who was that individual? Um, Brandon Blackwell. And do you know when 
her affair with Brandon began in relationship to Ben's murder? Very shortly beforehand. And then it continued on afterwards? Yes. And when you say very shortly, are we talking days or weeks? I would think weeks, I think. I'm sorry? Weeks, I believe. Okay. And... Or maybe a week. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Now, we were talking about some of the problems with the business and the marriage. With respect to the marriage, did those common, I think I described them as common, ordinary things sometimes spouses complain about. Did the nature of those complaints that Lindley addressed to you or talked to you about, did they change? Yes. And could you tell the jury in what manner they changed and how they changed? She came to the spa one morning and said that she had woke up in the middle of the night and he was on top of her, inside of her, raping her while she was asleep. And do you remember the date that Ben was murdered? Yes. Okay. And that was June 8th of 2017? Yes. Do you remember the day of the week that was? I don't. No, I'm sorry. Do you remember the day that Lindley reported this raping occurring? What day that occurred? I don't remember the exact day. Well, in relationship to the day he died and was murdered, how far prior to that was it that Lindley reported that she woke up and he was on top of her, raping her? I believe it was a month or maybe a little bit longer than that. So we're talking about a month prior to June 8th? Yes. June 8th, yes. I'm sorry, I keep wanting to flip my 8th and 17th. So about a month, maybe a little bit longer prior to that is where this occurred? Yeah. I don't know exactly the time. I'm sorry. When she told you this, what was your reaction? I was shocked and felt sorry for her, kind of hurt for her, I guess. What was she, how was her demeanor when she described this to you? She was very upset. And where did this conversation happen? At the spa. Where at in the spa? I believe it was either outside or it was in the back room, I'm not sure. We talked about it a couple of times after that, so I'm not sure where the initial time was that she told me. Was anybody else present for the initial time? No. And you said there were a couple other times she talked about this? Yes. Did she talk about additional allegations of sexual abuse or was it just talking different times about the same event? I believe it was just talking about the event multiple times. Were any people present during these other conversations besides the two of you? I think that Rachel Hunt might have been present for one, but I'm not 100% positive. You're not positive? Yeah. At some point in time, though, you shared this information yourself with Rachel, did you not? Yes. And when you would have these additional conversations, what was Lindley relating to you in those then? They had talked about it and Ben was sorry. She said that he was very sorry. She showed a text that he was sorry that it wouldn't happen again. And they were trying to work things out, I guess, or work past it. So is it fair to say you were told about this horrible event from Lindley that apparently occurred, or she says occurred, correct? Yes. And talked more about it, but she was relating that she and Ben were working through whatever this problem was? Yes. At some point, though, in time, did she just discuss with you divorcing Ben in relationship to this event? Yes. And what did she tell you about that? She said that he had resources to take her kids away and she didn't have the resources to divorce him and she was afraid to lose her children. And when she talked about resources, did she say specifically what, besides the children, those aren't resources, but what? That he had money and an established business that would help him, I guess, with an attorney to take her kids. I'm not positive. And so she discussed divorce, but she had told you that that wasn't an option for her? Right. As a result of those conversations, did she present to you or talk to you about a different manner of handling or resolving her marital issues? Yes. What was that that she discussed with you? She said that she didn't really think of any other option and that she asked if I could help her with murdering him. And where were you two at when this occurred? At the spa. Was there anyone else involved in the conversation? Not initially, no. There might be other people at the spa working and things, but these are conversations the two of you were having in private or alone? Yes. And again, do you remember the date that this first time she told you divorce is not the option? I think I need to murder my husband. It would have been 
shortly after she told me about him raping her, so a month or less than two months, but more than a month probably, kind of in that time frame. Okay. And you, you could be off by a week or two each way? Yeah. Okay. And uh, when she initially said, and again, these conversations, are these conversations that she's, that you're initiating with her or she's initiating them with you? She's initiating them with me. And, and this idea of murder, is this something she initiated or is it something you said, hey, what about this? No, she initiated it. This was not your suggestion? No, sir. This was not done in your direction? No. And, and you did ultimately <laughs> participate in attempting to kill Ben Rennick yourself, did you not? I did. You, and, and whom, at whom's, at whose direction were you helping, or who were you helping do that? Lindley, Rennick. And I want to talk about that now, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, tell us how you began. She said you've had this conversation about murdering him. Uh, how, how does that conversation wind up with you two actually attempting to kill Ben Rennick? Um, she had gone over a couple different, you know, possibilities, and um, it didn't really seem like any of those were likely, so um, she kind of suggested or brought it up that maybe she should poison him. And so you, what were some of these other possibilities or scenarios that she, she went over with you, if you recall? Um, she asked if I knew anyone that could get her a gun. Um, I think that that's pretty much all. She, trying to figure out if she knew someone that had a gun. So, so she asked you about if you knew anyone that had a gun? Yes. And what did you tell her about that? No. And after she learned that you didn't know anybody that had access to a gun, what was the next subject or idea that Lindley came up with? The poisoning. Okay. And when you say poisoning, uh, tell us about how you guys arrived at a plan and actually took action to poison Ben. Um, I provided her with some pills and she blended them up in a blender and put them in a protein shake for him to drink at night. Now prior, uh, let's, that's what you ultimately did, oh, but, so how did you get to that point where you're providing her with pills? What, um, did, what did you do? I asked my husband if I could get some pills and he knew that, he asked who they were for and I told him and I just said that she liked taking pills and that she had taken them in the past and she wanted them. Well, and, and actually, maybe I'm doing a poor job of this, I guess. Well, getting back, though, yeah. before you get to your asking your husband, the two of you are discussing poisoning your husband. Or yeah. poisoning her husband. Her husband, yes. Yeah. And, and do, you, do you yourself do any looking into research, sort of? Oh, yes. Yeah. Tell, tell the jury, after she talks about poisoning Ben, that being the option, because you don't know anybody with a gun when she asks you, what you what you do? Um, I look up on the internet, you know, what type of pills or how many it would take to kill somebody. And when you say look up on, like a Google search or something? Yes. And, and is Lindley involved in this Google search or, or is this something you're doing? She was there. I think I think we were both Googling. I'm not 100% positive. And, uh, is it fair to say, whatever you were Googling, you were telling her about? Yes. And if she was involved, she was telling you also? Right. It was and, a mutual and, and in that searching, were you also looking for a specific type of pill that should be used? Or? Um, I think just a general, um, you know, what type of pill would be the best, I think is what it was. I can't remember exactly. I'm sorry. And so the two of you are involved in some type of internet research to find what type of pill should be used? Yes. When, when that is done, do the two of you discuss where then you can get some some prescription drugs or drugs to do this? Yes. And, and how tell us about how that conversation happens. Um, we discuss, you know, who would possibly, who that she knew could possibly get her son, or if I knew somebody and she decided that she didn't know anyone, um, and so that's when I decided to ask. So, so Lindley didn't know anybody that could get her the drug? Not that she knew of conveniently, I guess, yeah. But exactly. you, you, you told her you did? Yes. Okay. And so now you're t kind of taking an affirmative action to say, hey, I know somebody where I can get these drugs. Yes. Okay, so I, I need to tell the jury, why why would you help your boss try to kill her husband? Um, I think I felt sorry for her. Um, it was a surreal situation, so it's kind of hard to explain what I was feeling at the time, but it didn't really seem, when I talk about it now, it obviously seems it was real, and at that time it didn't seem that way. 
Did you believe her about this rape allegation? I did, yes. Did, did she make other any other allegations about Ben physically, mentally abusing her in any ways? Yes. What, what else did she tell you about Ben? Um, she said that he was very mentally abusive, they would get in arguments a lot, and he would um, just really kind of dominate the situation and make her feel terrible or bad about different things. Did you ever see any signs of physical abuse? No. You know, no bruising, busted no. lips, black eyes? No, sir. Now, so basically, you felt, you were saying, you felt sorry for her, and, and, but feeling sorry for her is one thing. Why would you actually actively participate trying to murder somebody? Why would, why would you do that? I don't know. Do you regret doing that? Absolutely. Was it, have you made any bigger mistakes in your life? This was the biggest mistake I've ever made. Now, now ma'am, you just we were talking about you, you said I know where I can get some of these pills. Yes. To tell the jury where it was you decided you could get these pills. Um, I asked my husband if he knew anyone that could get them for me. This was I'm sorry, your husband. My husband now at the time he was not my husband. And, and while he was ultimately the one to provide you the pills, did he know what the ultimate purpose of these pills was for? No, sir. You didn't tell him you're helping your co-worker or your boss murder her husband? No. What pills did he provide you? Um, they were Percocet. Were these pills he had for a prescription? Not his, but uh, someone that he knew, yeah. And what did you tell him about needing these pills? That she asked for them. She liked taking pills. She had taken um, other pills in the past and just wanted them for so her he, own enjoyment, I guess, yeah. So his role in this is kind of thinking, well, maybe I'm kind of sliding some illegal drugs if somebody wants some drugs. Yeah, he was providing them to me pretty much, and then I was giving them to her. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's, yeah. where he, that's where his conduit is, yeah. so to speak. And, and how many pills did he give you? Um, I believe it was 10 to 15. Yeah. I'm not sure it's on the and, exact amount. And then what did you ultimately do with those pills? I gave them to her. And where did you give them to Lindley at? Um, at the spa, I believe, yeah. Did you see her do anything with them? I saw her grind them up, yes. Okay. And when you say grind them up, what was she using to grind them up? Um, a magic bullet. And what, how was, did you two discuss how these pills in ground up form would be given to Ben to ingest, hoping to kill him? Um, in a, yes, in, in a form of a protein shake. And why a protein shake? Um, I believe it was something that they frequently drank. Um, different clients would bring protein shakes into the spa, and it was something that they tried on a regular basis. Um, so she thought it would be e easy for him to, to do. Did Ben, did, were you aware Ben sometimes worked out and did things like that? Yes. And this would be part of that regime, so to speak? Yes. Uh, do you remember in relationship to the date Ben was actually murdered when the grinding up of the pills occurred? I think it was seven to 10 days or so. So maybe a week, week and a half prior. Yeah. That's your recollection. Yes. And again, you could be off a few days. Yes, sir. Uh, how is it that you knew, hey, today's the day, she's, she's ground up the pills, today's the day she's going to actually try to get Ben to drink this protein shake and kill him? Um, it was right around that same time. Well, I mean, did she say, hey, I'm gonna take the, tonight, well, I'm gonna try to Yes, this. yeah. What did she tell you about what she was going to do that night at home with the, with the ground up pills? She said she was going to put it in a protein drink and she was going to drink her own that didn't have any pills in it and then drink the, or give Ben the one that had the pills in it for him to drink. And to your knowledge, did she leave with that, that either the, the protein drink made up or the ground up pills that night? Yes. Uh, did you two communicate that well, night? Did you answer the question? You got to see, you got to give an audible. Oh, uh, yes. All right, now I ask you a question. Okay. Did the two of you that night communicate either through text messaging or phone calls or any type of social media that night? I don't believe so, no. Uh, the next day, you, you did communicate? Yes. Okay, when is it that you were contacted by her the next day? Uh, that morning, early morning. Okay, and that night, what were you thinking and doing yourself? Um, I thought that she was giving the pills to him um, and I was laid awake pretty much all night um, you, said, you said the next morning she contacted you. About what time? It was early. Um, I'm not sure on the exact time, but maybe 5, 6 a.m. early. 
Is that earlier than normal? Then the two of you might come into contact with each other? Yes. And how is it that she contacted you? Um, I believe she texted me first and then she called me. Okay, when she texted you, remember what the nature of the text was? It said it didn't work. And then you said there was an actual phone call? Yes. Tell us about that phone call. Um, she called me and said that he was very sick all night, threw up, um, but he was still alive. Did she indicate to you whether she also drank the same concoction? No, she drank the other, the other. When you say the other? The one without the pills in it. So she had one, uh, a drugged up concoction and one without? Yes. Did she indicate to you how she acted at home, drinking the, the normal drink? She pretended to be sick. So she, she acted like she had been both, when she was at home, that they were both sick? Yes. Did she describe how he was in terms of sick, what was wrong with him, or how he acted? Um, he was throwing up all night, very in and out of it, delirious. Now, uh, when she called you to tell you this information, did she ask you to go somewhere or meet her or something like that? Yes. Okay, what did she tell you? Um, we were going to meet up, um, I believe she... We were gonna meet at the spa, I believe, but then she drove to my house and we went to the spa. And so she came to your house? Yes. Okay. And was that unusual? Um, she'd only, yeah, I don't know that she'd ever been there before that or she had it been one or two times. It wasn't, wasn't common. And, and was Rachel at the house? No. Were you guys living together at this time? Um, I think that she was back and forth between where she lived um, a few hours away, but she was not there. Was Rachel aware? Uh, from you telling her about this poisoning incident? Not at this time, I don't believe, no. You didn't tell her prior to or that morning? I don't believe so, no. What, what did, when Lindley arrived at your house, tell us what happened. Um, we got, I got in my vehicle and she was in hers and we drove to the spa. I mean, basically, you didn't talk about it, she just showed up. Right, yeah, I'm not sure exactly why she came to the house, but we went to the spa and we started talking there. Okay. And at the spa, is this before business starts? Yeah, I don't know that the spa was open that day. Okay. And what, what did the two of you talk about at the spa that day? Um, kind of talking about why it didn't work and um, what, what, I don't know, why it didn't work, I guess, is really what the basis of the conversation was. So you're basically trying to figure out what went wrong. Right. And, and in this conversation, does the conversation turn from what went wrong to some other subject? Yes. And when it turns, what is this new subject? Or uh, well, it's sort of the same subject, isn't it? Yes. But what what do, does how does the conversation turn to, and what what is discussed then? Um, you know what what the next step is. Um, she still wanted him killed, and so what what could she do next to make sure that happened? So basically, you guys discuss. Hey, the poisoning didn't work, and she's wanting to know it and talk to you about how can I kill my husband still? Yes. She's not put it out of her mind, hey, that didn't work, I think I'm going to divorce him or I'm going to live with this wife or whatever. She's still wanting to kill. Yes. <clears throat> what conversation do, does she have with you at this time about the next method or manner or plan to kill Ben Rennick? Um, she brought up her ex-boyfriend. And who is this ex-boyfriend? Michael Humphrey. And, and do you, prior to this date, had you ever heard that name before? Possibly just talking about ex-boyfriends, not not very often or at all. Okay. You don't recall the name being seen? Not specifically, no. And so you may not have ever heard about, but if you did, it was just the two of you guys. I don't mean to sound like a male chauvinist pig here, girl talking about ex-boyfriends kind of thing. Right. And so it would have been nothing significant that you would have known about him other than that. Right. Uh, what does she tell you about Michael Humphrey being her ex-boyfriend and why he might be somebody she should seek out to murder her husband, Ben? Um, she said that he had a prior record of um, being in trouble, and so she thought maybe he would know someone or hung out with people that had records of being in trouble or, you know, a history, so she thought maybe he would help her. Did she tell you what kind of trouble he'd been into in prior? I don't know. Uh, after she... Did, did she have other thoughts besides this ex-boyfriend, or was it just a matter of trying to figure out who in her life could help her, and this is somebody she came up with? Yes, yeah, that's correct. It was somebody she out. came Yeah. <clears throat> After she came up with uh, thinking about her ex-boyfriend, did she tell you when she last had contact with this guy? Yes, it what had been several years. I'm sorry? Several years prior. She, and she hadn't had any contact in that time since? 
Not that I know of. No, I think it was before her and Ben got married. What did she tell you you guys should now do to try to get Michael Humphrey involved in killing Ben Rennick for Linda? Um, we had to find him first. And tell us what steps you, you took, uh, you or Lindley or both of you together, to, f to figure out where Michael Humphrey might be at. Um, we searched him on the internet, um, and then we found an address um, that was listed. And where was that address list, or where was that at? In Holt Summit, Missouri. And, and where's Holt Summit in, in relationship to where we're at right now, Columbia, where the spa is at? Um, toward in the middle, or close to Jeff City. So it's you know, 25, 30 minutes south of here. Yes. Basically, Jeff City south of the Missouri River, Holt Summit is a small town just north of the river. Yes. And, and that day, the day after you helped poison her husband with these pills, is the day you began look, talking, or seeking out Michael Humphrey. Yes, it is. After finding an address for him in Holt Summit, did, what did the two of you actually do? We drove to the address. And did you have any luck locating Michael Humphrey at the address? Not at that time. <clears throat> where did you go next? We went to um, Best Buy because that's where he la that's where he worked when she had spoken with him last. Did she describe to you what he did for Best Buy? Um, yes, he installed audio equipment. <clears throat> he installed audio. Uh, equipment? Yeah, worked on audio equipment. And was he? Did you guys go to Best Buy? Yes. And what did you learn there? that he hadn't worked there in quite a while. And, and I didn't ask you, where's Best Buy at? In Jeff City. Jeff so basically, you go to Holt Summit, he's not at the address you have, you cross the river to Jeff City, go to the store, he's not there anymore, he doesn't work there anymore, they don't know where he's at. Right. Where did you guys go next? Um, back to his house. Back to his house? To Michael's house, or, yes. the, or to the address, yeah. Yeah, and Holt Summit? Yes. And this time, on this occasion, when you were back there this time, did you have any luck finding Michael Humphrey? Yes. And where was he at when you got back to this address? He was in his car, or sitting outside of it with the door open by his car. So he's sitting outside the residence in the car with, with the door open? Yes. And was this his, did you learn this was his car? Yes. And, and do you remember what kind of car it was? Um, I don't, it was an older sports car, dark, dark colored. But we're talking a small car, not a big Lincoln Continental or right. a truck or SUV. It's yeah, a, small, a small smaller car. car. Yeah. And tell us what then transpires when you and Lindley get there and find Michael Humphrey outside the house. Um, she got out of the car and went over and talked to him for a few minutes. And where um, were you at? Inside my car. Could you hear what they were talking about? No. Okay, so she gets over there and could you see his, were you able to see his reaction to seeing Lindley? Um, he was a little confused, um, and kind of when we drove up I could see that he was, he recognized her, but he was confused on why she was there, or I assume confused on why she was there. He had a confused look for whatever reason. Right, yes. But to your knowledge, they hadn't met or seen or talked in several years. Not to my knowledge, no. So that might be one reason to explain why he was confused. Yes. A after they talked a little bit where you couldn't hear them, what, what happened next with the three of you? Um, we went inside his house. And you or say we, all three of you? The three of us, yes. Okay. Was anybody else inside there when you got in there? Not that I know of. Tell the jury what, what, what occurred inside the house. Um, she explained to him that she had tried to poison him and it didn't work. Um, and so she asked him you know, why he thought it didn't work. And um, before this, they kind of just talked and caught up a little bit about life. And then that's when she intersected into why she was there. Yeah, I mean, you didn't just go in there and say, hey, I tried to kill my poison, I right. poison my husband, I need help. She yeah. had some small talk. They had, yeah. So they're like catching up, hey, how you been, that kind of thing. Yes, yeah. Okay. She did, uh, did she tell him about the spa? Running the spa? Yes, he already knew. Okay. Yeah. And then and then at some point there, after the small talk sort of ends, she, you, the conversation turns to what had just happened the night before. Yes. And, and again, can you tell the jury as best you call, can recall, specifically what Lindley Rennick said to Michael Humphrey in your presence. Um, she told him it didn't work and she wanted to know why, so they discussed that, and then she asked him if he could help her. Um, he asked why she wanted to kill her husband, and so she explained that he was raping her in the night and that they were having a lot of um, troubles, and then that's when she asked him if he could help her. I'm sorry? That's when she asked him if he could help her. 
And what exactly did she ask? Did she ask him to do something, or did she just say, can you help me? If he knew anyone that could help her, or if he knew someone that could kill Ben, or knew of a way that she could do it. And what was his reaction to that? He was shocked by the whole situation, I think, and then he said that he would think about it. And after, did Lindley, during that time frame, ever promise him anything? No, not that I know of. I mean, say, hey, if you do this for me, I'll give you this or that, or anything? No, not that I heard. Okay. And while this conversation is going on, are you engaged in the conversation, or actively participating, or are you just sitting there? I'm kind of just sitting there, maybe engaged a couple of times, but pretty much just kind of sitting there listening. I mean, this is Lindley's ball to play with, so to speak. Right, and she knew him, and I didn't know him. She's the one driving the train? Yeah. Objection, Your Honor, leading. Don't lead your witness. I'll withdraw, Judge. Withdraw. Who's in charge of this operation? Lindley. Okay. And so, how long do you guys think you were down there that entire day before you left? Were we at his house, or just the whole day? No, the conversation. Oh, I don't know, less than an hour, I think. And the two of you do leave? Yes, we do. Okay. Where did the two of you go to? To the spa, and then each of us went home. Okay. And so you go back to the spa. Do you remember anything about the conversation afterwards with Lindley? Yeah, she just talked about how she hoped that he knew someone that could help her, that he would be able to help her, and that she hoped that this would work out, this plan would work out. When, again, you think this was, if the poisoning attempt to murder was seven to ten days before, and this is the next day after that. Yes. Before, seven to ten days before Ben was actually murdered. Okay, so we're seven to ten days before. When is the next time that you were engaged in this conspiracy to kill Ben Rennick? What happens next to involve you? Michael came to the spa, I believe, was the next one. Okay. And, again, in relationship to the day meeting him at the trailer, when was that? Were we talking a day, two days, three days, a week, as best you recall? I'm not sure, a day or two. It wasn't very long after that. So within a couple days is fair? Yes. Okay. He comes to the spa, right? Yes. How is it that you knew he was coming, or did you know he was coming to the spa? Yes, she told me that he was coming. Okay. And when did she tell you that? I believe it was that morning. I can't remember exactly. Did she tell you why he was coming to the spa that day? Yes, they were going to discuss further plans about what she asked him to do. And did you see him actually come, or is this just she told you this? No, he came. And when he got there, did you see what he was driving that day? I don't know that I saw his car that day. And when he got there, can you describe where he went in the spa? Yeah, I took him to the back where we take clients, because he was coming to get a massage is what she put him on the books, like he was getting a massage. So I took him to the back like we always did clients. So when he came in, you greeted him like a client? Like a client, yes, sir. A client, I assume that you at least sort of knew, not a brand new client because you'd met him already. Yeah, yeah. So he goes in the back, and she and Michael are in this room, a private room where massage and spa activity is conducted. Yes. Are you present in that room? No. So you don't know what physically happens or is talked about between the two of them? Not personally, no. Well, you were later told, correct? Yes. I'm sorry. But you weren't in there to hear it yourself? Correct. Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Okay. Sustain. The legion wins. Were you present during that conversation? No. How long was he, Michael Humphrey, back there, if you recall? The time slot was for an hour, a 50-minute massage, so it was about 50 minutes to an hour. Did you see him leave? Yes, I did. Did you have any conversation with him other than maybe see a kind of thing? No. Did you and Lindley then discuss anything about this conspiracy after Michael Humphrey left the spa? Yes. When did you discuss it? I believe it was right after, the same day. And where did this happen at? At the spa. Okay. 
And I mean, was anybody else involved in the conversation? I can't remember at that point, I'm not sure. Okay. And during any of these other conversations, who, who might have been if they were involved? Rachel Hunt. I can't remember when she became a part of the conversation. And let's be clear here, you, you were actively, you acknowledge now, you were actively engaged in this conspiracy. Your Honor, this is a leading question. A leading witness to stand. <laughs> you, were you actu actively engaged in the conspiracy to kill a man? Yes. Was Rachel, uh, to the, the extent you knew of her involvement? No. Now, what did Lindley tell you after Michael left about what they discussed in that room for about 50 minutes. Um, she said that he had a family member that had ties to a group of people that would um, possibly kill Ben. And did he? Did she give this group of people a name? She called them the Mexican Mafia. Is what she called them. Okay, and this is what Lindley is telling you happened, but you don't know if it. Do you know whether this is after what occurred or not? No, I'm sorry, I don't. What does she tell you in addition to that information? Um, that it would, she would have to have money to pay them. And did she discuss with you the amount of money? Um, I don't know that we discussed the exact, but it was a high amount because she didn't have the money to pay them. So she told you, I need this money and I don't have enough. Basically, yes. Because of that, is, does she tell you what, what's going to occur next? Um, yes, yeah, she said that Michael was going to provide her with a gun. And does she tell you that in that same conversation, or is this a later date? I think it's a later date, yes. So th after this conversation, learning about this other group, maybe possibly the Mexican Mafia, yes. you discuss the amount, correct? Yes. Okay. And later on, then, she just tells you, I don't think I can do that, but Michael's going to provide me a gun. Yeah, she had went to his house in between that time, I believe, and that's where they discuss the details behind him um, providing her a gun. Now you said, well, we hadn't got there, but that was oh, going to be sorry. my next. You, you, you never returned to, to Michael Humphrey's residence. Correct. Okay. Are you aware of where, whether Lindley ever went down there and spoke to him? According to her, she did. Okay. And again, this is what she, you didn't see it happen, but this is what she told you. Right. <clears throat> and after she had visited Michael Humphrey's house a second time, or what did she tell you about that conversation? That's when um, he said that he would provide her with a gun. And... This, this second visit to, to Michael Humphrey's home, this would have been after the spot massage, correct? Yes. Yeah. When after? Are we talking a day or two? Or? Yes, very shortly after. Because we're talking about seven to ten day time period to begin right. with, correct? I think it would have been the next day. It would have been right around that same. He would have came to the spa and then I think it was the next day. And so she, she, tell, she tells you she went down there. He's going to provide her a gun. Exactly, but she, Your Honor. The, if Mr. Zoller wants to testify, he should have to take that. The yeah, no, but I don't know about that. Overruled on that. Can I ask you a question, Counsel? I, I think I was asking you, ma'am, that she tells you he's going to give, or going to provide her a gun. Does she? What does she tell you, if anything, about having been actually provided a gun? Does she discuss that with you? Um, no, I'm, I'm confused on the question. I'm sorry. Well, maybe I misunderstood you. You said after she went down to speak to Michael at his house a second time without you, she reported to you that Michael was going to give her give her a gun to use. Yes, correct. Okay. Did, did she ever tell you, was there ever a conversation where she told you, hey, Michael just gave me the gun? No. So she, to your knowledge, what is going to, or how is this going, gun going to get involved in this conspiracy to murder Ben? They were going to go together. Well, and tell the jury how that, well, again, you discussed with Lindley, did you not, this, this plan? Yes. You never discussed it with Michael again, did you? No, sir. The, uh, what plan did Lindley report to you having come up with Michael to kill her husband? Um, that they were going to, I think it was originally going to happen in the morning, and they were going to meet up, I believe, and then go to the facility, um, his business, and kill him there. Um, it kind of changed a little bit throughout the, pro the process. When, when did she tell you this plan in relationship to the time she went down to Michael and Michael told her, I'm going to get, Michael's going to get her a gun? Uh, very shortly after, the next and, day. And when did she, did she tell you when they're actually going to go out and do it. It was supposed to be, I think, the next day or right after that, yes. 
But did it get delayed? Yes. Why did it get delayed? Um, Michael had car troubles. And so it, uh, uh, finally a day is actually decided upon and it actually occurs, correct? Correct. And that's June 8th, 2017? Yes. Okay. Uh, and again, this is a conversation you had with Lindley, but tell, tell the jury on June 8th, 2017, what is going to occur so that she can successfully kill her husband, Ben? Um, Michael was going to come to the spa and they were going to go together to her house, his business, um, to kill him at home or at, at work. So there, and, and where is his work, Ben's work? It's right, I, from what I understood, it was right by their house, same, same area. Had you, had you prior to this been to the house? No, I've never been there. Okay, and, but you know the general, from what you understand, where it's at? The, yes. And, the and town. what town is it in? Um, close to Montgomery City, Missouri. And, and where is that time-wise, driving-wise, to your knowledge from Columbia? Um, over an hour, I don't know the exact, maybe an hour and 15 or 20. Around an hour drive there, or an hour drive back? Yes. And so the is there a time that this is supposed to happen, you know, morning, afternoon, or night? It was supposed to happen in the morning. And we'll talk about what actually happened, but it was supposed to be in the morning? Yes. That night, did Lindley have some sort of plans with Ben that were supposed to occur, presuming he wasn't actually getting murdered that day? Yes. What was the plan with respect to that? Um, they were going on a date night. And was there going to be somebody involved in the date night with respect to the kids? Uh, they were having a babysitter. Did you know who that babysitter was? No. <coughs> And, and why was this date night part of, was this date night part of the plan? Um, yes, it was, yeah. And how was it part of the plan according to Lindley? Um, she needed a reason, um, she, I'm not sure exactly how it fit into the plan, but she needed a reason for her to um, text him and say that she wasn't going to be able to make it, she wasn't feeling good, so to cancel the date night is kind of how. So there's going to be a date night, but she wants to use, during the day, she wants to tell him, I'm not feeling good. We yes. need to cancel date night. Yes. Uh, do, do the, are the kids in school or at a daycare at this point? Um, at a school that I know, that I believe a school. Do you remember what school that was? It was a private school of some sort around that area. I'm not sure the name. And was the fact that these kids were in school going to be part of this plan? Yes. And tell the jury, <laughs> according to Lindley, what, what role her kids were going to play in the murder of her husband. Um, Lindley was supposed to pick the kids up, but she was going to text Ben that she wasn't feeling well, so then he was supposed to go pick the kids up. And, if, and, and why was that part of the plan if he was supposed to go pick up the kids? Because she needed a reason for the school to call her and tell her that he didn't show up. And why wouldn't he pick up the kids? Because he wouldn't be alive anymore. So he was gonna, he was supposed to pick up the kids, but when he gets killed, he can't. The school's gonna call her at the spa and say, hey, Ben never picked up the kids. Correct. And she's gonna have what? Jackson, Your Honor, leading. Jackson, the old group. And she was going to have what by being at the spa? An uh, alibi, I guess, or, uh, yeah, an alibi. That's a good word for it. Yeah. Did, what about you? Were you going to have a role while they were gone? Were you going to play some sort of role in this in this murder? Um, she asked me to text Ben from her phone um, and say that she wasn't feeling well. And did you text Ben from the phone and, and saying that? No. Why not? I got scared to text from her phone at all. You you did communicate one time, did you not, with Ben on, in on his the, manner? Yes, on and, the computer. And how on the computer did you communicate with Ben this one time? Um, her Facebook. She logged into her Facebook and it was up. And so she, they would message, use some sort of messenger app on the Facebook? Yes. And, and when, when in relationship to her being at the spa or not at the spa, did you send this message? Um, it was right when she, it wasn't long after she left. And, and she being left, she left with whom? With Michael Humphrey. And, and what did you use her Facebook account to message to Ben's account? Um, just said, I'm not feeling well, I'm going to lay down, I think is what it said. Can you pick the kids up from school? And that was, when we see that in some records, that would have been you actually doing that as a participant in this conspiracy? Yes. What about you and Rachel? While they were committing this crime, 
Lindley and, and Michael, were you, use the term alibi, were you worried about having an alibi? Yes. Can you tell the jury what you and Rachel did, or were planning to do, uh, that day to establish an alibi for yourselves? Um, we went to the bank and to the gas station that was, or the convenience store that was down the street from where we worked. And, and why going to the bank or the convenience store, why would that be an alibi for the two of you? Um, I wanted, we wanted to make sure that we were on camera in Columbia. These places might have a camera. I think, yeah, well, I think I, we figured that a bank would have a camera, definitely. Yeah. Now, let's talk about that. That was sort of the plan, correct? Yes. Let's, let's talk about the day. That morning at the spa, what is what, what happens at the spa? Um, he, Michael has car trouble, and so he doesn't come at the beginning like he originally thought he was going to. And how, how do you know Michael's having car trouble? Uh, Lindley told, told us. Okay. And, and are you aware of how she knows Michael's having car trouble? Um, they were communicating through calls or texts. I'm not sure which, but so over she, the phone. And, and so things are getting delayed? Yes. And what, what is your, your emotional state that day? Um, nervous, uneasy. Was it noticeably, were you noticeably nervous? You yes. And what about Rachel? Did you notice anything about her? I believe she was nervous too. Yeah, I feel like it, the energy was really nervous. And do you finally find out in some manner that Michael is actually on his way? Yes. And, and what time of day is that, do you believe, that you finally find out he's, he's on his way? Not that he's there, but he may be on his way. It's in the afternoon. <clears throat> so instead of getting this done in the morning, it's now in the afternoon. Yes. And do you actually see Michael arrive at the spa? Yes. Well, no. I see his car, or the car that I had seen previous. Uh, where are you at when you see this, the car? In, at the front of the spa, inside. Okay, so he, he, his car arrives, but he doesn't come into the spa. Right. And... Uh, are you able to actually see him in the car, or is it just what you believe to be his car? It's just what I believe to be his car. Is there any I interaction think... then between you, Rachel, and Lindley at this point in time? Um, she grabs a little bag and then says she'll be back. But... And when you say she grabs a little bag, can you describe what this little bag is? Um, it was a little, um, like a clutch bag. I think it was like an Ipsy bag that was small that you could carry like makeup in, or you know, like a small. It was about this big. So, I mean, you're holding your hands up. Would that be about yes, sir. four inches yeah. by six? Yes. What, what about width of this clutch bag? It was very thin, just a little zipper. Um, kind of just to carry, like, a, I don't know, a couple little things. Do you notice anything about Lindley's uh, appearance or how she's dressed? Yes. And, and tell the jury about that. Um, she had on a hoodie and uh, leggings and tennis shoes. And, and was, it, was, it, was that any way unusual? Uh, well, it was summer, um, but she wore leggings a lot. I don't know, unusual, but it was hot. Did she wear a lot of hoodies during the summer? No. And with respect to the hoodie, I mean, when I, I say hoodie, I think of a sweatshirt that's got like a little head head thing you can cover your head up. Correct. Does she have it up where her head is, her appearance would be partly obscured? Yes, she put the hood up as she was walking out the door. And do you recall about what time of day it was that she left the, 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 the spa? It was afternoon, two to three, somewhere around that time frame. I'm not sure on the exact time. And when she, after she leaves, uh, what do you and Rachel, does she leave anything behind? Her phone. And when you, her phone, was there, did she tell you there was going to be a reason she was going to leave that phone behind? She wanted us to text on her phone uh, to Ben. And had she ever had you text on her phone prior to this? Not that I remember, no. Had she ever left her phone behind for a significant period of time? She um, would leave it up at the front when she was in massages, but it was always locked. Or I believe it was locked. I don't know. I didn't look at it. So they, they leave around 2 to 3. You said somewhere in that window. Yes. You weren't watching the clock. No. And you said earlier you think it's about an hour, hour, 15 minutes in Montgomery County. Yes. Okay. When approximately, if they left between two and three, when approximately do you think or recall them? Well, did they come back? They did. Okay. And how long were they gone, if you, if you recall? Um, I believe they got back a little before five or around five o'clock. Okay. So 
they leave sometime between two and three and get back sometime around five o'clock is your recollection? Yes. So that would be a two to three hour window possibly? Yes. While they're gone, what do you and Rachel do? We go to the bank and then we go to the convenience store. Just like you talked about earlier? Yes, yeah. And do you do anything else yourself? And the, I had sent the message to Ben. That's when I had sent the message to him, was right after she left. This was the message you described earlier using the computer? Yes, sir. Saying, I, I, I'm not feeling well, please pick up the kids, kind of. Yeah, yes. And at whose direction did you send that? Lindley. When they arrive, where are you at when, when you first realized that Lindley is back? I was at the front. Okay. And uh, how is it that you're aware she's back? She came in the door, the front door. She walked in. And, and can you describe whether her appearance in terms of what she's dressed, how she's dressed, is that the same or different than when she left? It was the same, except for I don't believe that her hood was up this time. And do you recall whether she's carrying anything when she comes in? No, I don't remember. I don't think so. And when she comes in, can you describe what her demeanor is like? Um, she is really in a rush. Um, she runs in the spa, or not runs, she walks quickly through the spa and says, follow me to the back, and she walks to the back of the spa. So she comes in walking quickly. Yes. And heads to the back of the spa. Yes. W what is in that back area of the spa? There's a shower. Of, it's called a Vichy shower. And, and I forgot to ask you this, I think. Who else besides you and Rachel were present that day at the spa? Um, there was another worker there as well earlier in the day. I don't know what time she left. Okay. And what about clients? There was um, clients, a couple clients there for the other co-worker and then Lindley was supposed to have clients but she canceled um, their appointments. So when this other client, the clients of this other worker were done in the morning, they left? Yeah, and she that left. Worker left? Yes. Okay, and then any clients of Lindley's had been canceled? Correct. So Lindley goes back there and she tells you to do what? Uh, to give her a shower. Okay. Where is Rachel at? She's in the back break room. Okay. Well, was she in the back break room when Lindley got in there? I don't know. If, I don't think so. I think she walked back right when she saw her start to walk in. Do you recall Lindley giving her some direction? I don't know. I. Do you recall anybody telling her to go in the break room? <clears throat> yeah, she went back there so that way Michael wouldn't see her if he was in the building. Yes. Well, and that's what I'm asking is, oh. who, who, who said that? Go back there so Michael doesn't see you. I believe it was Lindley. Well, did you say it? No. <laughs> okay. So if it's just you and Lindley and Rachel, yeah. it would have been Lindley saying to Rachel, go in that room so Michael doesn't see you. Yeah. And you two go back in the shower. What's the shower area? Um, it's, a, it's called a wet room is what it, what it is. A wet it's room, like I a, apologize. Oh, uh, it's like a tile uh, room that you give scrubs lay down shower it's a lay down shower and when you get back there with Lindley what does she tell you or ask you to do to scrub her off and shower her uh, does she tell us what happens I mean what you see oh, her she do took off her clothes and she got on the Vichy shower and she asked me to scrub her body and her hands really well and she washed her whole body and where were her clothes at when this process started they were in the room where we were Okay, she so put them in a pile on, there was a little counter in there. Now, <clears throat> as you're doing this, does somebody come back into that area? Yes. Who? Michael Humphrey. And when he comes back there, can you tell us what conversation occurs between uh, Michael, Lindley, and you if you're involved? Yes, he walks in and he says, does she know? Um, or did you tell her? And Lindley said, no, she doesn't know. And then he quickly left right after that. And when he's asking, does she know, is she, who is he referring to? To me. And so he asks Lindley if you know, and she says I, she doesn't. Right, correct. Uh, and then he leaves. Yes. What is his attitude or demeanor like? Um, he was very uh, nervous, ready to get out of there, kind of. I mean, I don't know him very well, so, but it seemed out of the ordinary, very rushed. And, and he, in fact, leaves. To my knowledge, he left. Yeah, he wasn't in the spot when I got out of there. So. Now, let me ask you this. During this entire <clears throat> time frame we've been talking about, did you ever see either one of them with a weapon? No, sir. Uh, as, as you're cleaning Lindley, so to speak, does she wind up, do you ask her about what happened out at the house? Uh, yes. Do you ask or does she just tell She you? says, do you want to know? 
Okay, so she tells you, do you want to know? Yes. And what's your response? I think I said, sure, if you want to tell me, or if you feel like you should tell me, that something along those lines. And, and does she then decide to tell you? Yes. What does she tell you on this date at, while you're helping clean her up? Um, she said that they went to the facility um, where he worked and, uh, or where he owned, and he was bringing a trash bag outside of the facility when they got there. And so they got out of the car and- Let me stop you there. Who was bringing the trash bag? Sorry, Ben was bringing a trash bag out of um, the snake facility. And so she, uh, she, they got out of the car and he looked very confused as to why his wife was there, I guess, with somebody else. And um, she said she would take the bag to the trash and she had a friend that wanted to look at snakes. And so Ben took Michael inside of the facility and that's where, um, at that time she told me that Michael uh, killed him inside of the facility. Did she tell you on this occasion any steps that were taken to cover up what had occurred inside there? Uh, she said that they picked up the the um, case the casing cases of the bullets. They picked up something to do with the bullets. Yes. And did she say who picked them up? I believe they both picked them up. Yeah. What did she tell you happened afterwards? Um, she said that they didn't get all of them picked up and there were some in the facility and so they were trying to find them and then they left and came back to the spa. And again, I think you said they got back sometime right around five. Yes. Did she also at that point in time tell you about something uh, involving gas? Yes. What did she tell you about uh, the gas situation, if you will? She said on the way to her house, um, the snake facility, on the way to where she lived, um, that he didn't have gas in his car, so they had to stop and she used her debit card to pay for his gas. And when she was describing that to you, what was her attitude about that? Um, she was irritated that he wouldn't have gas in his car because now um, there was a record of her card being used out on the edge of Columbia, outside of Columbia. No. Did she tell you any, on this date, did she tell you any more about how Ben was murdered? No. Did you ever have another conversation with her where that story that she told you about how Ben was murdered changed? Yes. Okay. When was that second time she told you about what happened with her and Michael and Ben out at the Snake facility? I believe it was maybe a week after or so. I'm not exactly sure on the time frame. And where were you two at when that conversation happened? We were in either her vehicle or my vehicle, um, sitting in the car. And how, was how, how is it that this subject came up the second time, a week later? Um, it was just general conversation, really, and then she said something along the lines of, I didn't think that I could do it. Um, it was kind of a random um, statement. So you guys are in the car, and she kind of blurts this random, I didn't think I could do it out. Yes. After you heard this random statement, did you know what she was referring to? Yes. Okay. What, was she, what, what did you believe she was referring to? To them killing Ben, or what I thought was Michael killing Ben. But. And, and, and in response to the statement, did you say something? Yes, I said I thought you said that you that he did it. I, I didn't think that you said you did it. So you, you basically remember the statement from the week before? Yes. Where she said Michael had done it? Yes. And so you say, well, I thought you said Michael did it. Yes. After you question her about that, does she tell you uh, uh, some, some more information? Yes. What does she tell you? Um, she said that Michael got... Uh, too nervous or didn't want to do it and so he handed her the gun and she actually killed him killed and, him. and what did she tell you about actually killing him? Um, she said that she put the gun to his back and shot him several times Did you ask her for any more details than that? I don't, no, I don't think so. Did she provide any more that you know? No, no After she told you that well let me, And this is about a week after the day of the murder. Yes Going back to the day of the murder now uh, after you, you, you've kind of cleaned her up, she's told you her first version of what happened to kill Ben and who did what. What, what next transpires between you, Rachel, and her while at the spa? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? Well, what happens next? I mean... Oh, uh, that same day, or later? Yeah, we're, again, we're, we're at the point where she, you've helped clean her up and she's told oh, you the first duty. version. What's going on? Oh. What happens next at the spa? Uh, we leave. And go home. Were you were you around still when when the school? Well, are you aware whether the school called or not? I believe that she had already left when they called when they called her. 
And did Lindley ever tell you later about that? Yes. What did she tell you? She um, had messaged me and said that the school called Bend and pick her kids up and she was um, worried. And, and she says in this message to you that she's worried. Yes. Why would she say that if she knew what had happened? It was to, in case I guess the police looked at her messages, she, it would make it look like she was really worried. She was acting? <laughs> like she was shocked, yes. Yeah. And, and was her plan to send out various messages like that to continue to act? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, leading. Sustain. Did she discuss with you whether she would act? Uh, she had dis we had discussed it prior, um, yes, before. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. She, you just, and did you agree to act along if she, if she contacted you? Yes. Now, <clears throat> jumping ahead then this week, you have the second conversation where she explains that she is the one that actually pulled the trigger killing her husband. Yes. Okay. After that, did the two of you ever discuss this again? Uh, no. I mean, this, this, you didn't revisit this or, hey, what about this or that? No, not about the actual um, situation that happened, no. You, you mentioned earlier uh, that she became, began a sexual affair with Brandon Blackwell. Yes. Uh, that, that affair evolved into them having a, well, are you aware whether that affair evolved into something more? I am now, yes. And, and, and describe what happened. What, Resulted from that affair. Um, from my understanding, they have a child together. And at some point in time, you yourself were interviewed by the police, were you not? I was. You were interviewed several times. Yes. And we're going to talk about the day you got arrested. But on all, during all these interviews, prior to the day you got arrested, did you tell the truth to the police? No. Why not? <clears throat> I was scared. And instead, did you tell them uh, what I'll call a cover story about your involvement and how you knew Michael Humphrey? Yes. Okay. And tell the jury what the cover story was that you told the police. For the reason we contacted him? Is that yeah, what? How, yeah, how it is you knew, why you and Lindley would be together with Michael oh, Humphrey. Um, because he was going to put an audio system in my car, or I, want, I was asking him to put an audio system in my car. And so. And so the idea was if they asked you why you knew Michael, it was because he would, you, you would actually put the two of you together to, so he could put an audio system in your car. Correct. Who told you to use that story? Lindley. And did you agree to do so? I did. And I, I understand there's more you talked to the police about, but that was what you told them as to your involvement with Michael. Yes. And, and you repeatedly lied completely about your involvement. I did. And I was to protect yourself. Yes, sir. Now, <clears throat> during this time frame prior to your arrest, uh, we mentioned Brandon Blackwell. Did you ever have any occasion to discuss with him specific details about this conspiracy? No. Was there ever a time where Lindley sought you out after she had been interviewed by the police uh, about something? Yes. That he was present? Yes. And where was it that you and Lindley met to discuss her, her interview with the police? Uh, Gerbs um, on Paris Road. And that's here? In Columbia, yes. And, and who else was present besides the two of you? Uh, me, Lindley, and Brandon. And, and prior, and your understanding was where had Lindley been earlier in the day? At the um, Highway Patrol in Jefferson City, or their office. And, and how was it that you knew to meet Lindley at this location? She called me or texted me, one of the two. And did, did you agree, go meet her then? Yes. And, and prior to her telling you kind of about what happened that day or whatever, uh, did she ask you to do something with respect to you and her phone? Yes, she'd always, I mean, when we talked about anything with the investigator, she would always say, or the case in general, put the phone away or um, turn the radio up, put it under your, in your pocket, that kind of stuff, so that way, no one could hear. And who was always coming up with this idea to, to, to cover up the conversation? I believe it was Lindley. I don't know who else. I mean, it wasn't you, say, was it you saying this? No. And on, on this occasion, uh, when you were there and Lindley was there, you said, mentioned Brandon was present. Yes. Uh, did, did the two of you, Lindley and you, discuss any specifics about what had transpired back on June 8th? No. 
So nothing like that would have been said in front of Brandon. No. And uh, Winley gave you some advice at the end of this conversation, did she not? Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Do you remember her discussing with you whether you should get an attorney? Oh, whether she should get an attorney? Or, or one of you. Yes, yeah. I told her she should get an attorney. You told yes. her she yes. should get an attorney yeah. after you discussed what happened at the Highway Patrol. Yes. Now, now you described, I think, uh, meeting Michael down at his house that one day, seeing him at the massage that day, and then seeing him again on the day of the murder. Yes. Okay. Was there any other occasions that you would have had any contact with Michael yourself uh, in any manner? I saw him one other time, yes. When, when was that? Um, his car broke down and so several of us, uh, there was four of us total, went to jump his car. And when was that in relationship to these events? If you can put it after the massage, but before the murder, or before the massage, do you, do, do you remember? Yeah, it was before the murder, I believe it was maybe after the massage, I'm not sure, I'm sorry. It was, it was bef between at least going down to his house and the murder. Correct. Okay, and tell us how it is, you said the four of us, tell the jury who the four of you are, what you were doing, and what happened that day. Um, it was myself, Lindley, Rennick, uh, Rachel Hyatt, and another co-worker. And what and were you guys doing? We were handing out business flyers for the spa, I believe, and then we went to lunch. And then he called her and told her that he was broken down and needed a jump or something. And, and he being Michael. Michael, Michael, yes. And so where did the four of you go? On the side of the highway um, going towards Jefferson City. And on that occasion, to your knowledge, was there any discussions that you were involved in involving this conspiracy? No. Other than that occasion, do you remember one other time when you would have had contact with Michael about this conspiracy? On the phone, yes. And tell the jury when, when that was in relationship to the murder. It was after. Okay, and when you say after, though, uh, are we talking days. hours, days, or weeks? You're, you're kind of talking at the same time. Can you talk one at a time? I'm sorry. When, it was, when you, can you give a time frame? Uh, I would say a week or after. Okay. And why is it that you talked with Michael on the phone? Uh, Lindley had asked me to call him. And what did she ask you to do when you called Michael Humphrey? Um, there was investigators that were coming to talk with, I believe, me, and maybe they'd already spoken with her, and so she wanted um, him to know that they might be contacting him, uh, him. And was there some sort of ruse or story as to why you would be calling him out of the blue? Yes, to um, say that she, you know, her husband had passed and that she wasn't taking massage appointments right now. And you, you, did you do that with respect, that, that actual part with respect to some of her legitimate clients? Yes. But in addition to this statement to be made to Michael, what else were you supposed to tell him that you weren't telling legitimate clients? That the police might be contacting them. And, and did you place that call? Yes, I did. And did you speak with Michael? Yes. Yep. And, and, and did, what did you tell him? Exactly that, that um, the police that Ben had passed, um, Lindley was no longer taking massages or doing massages, and since they had been communicating and kind of touch based again after all this time, that the police might be contacting him to ask why. And, and his response to or reaction to the call was, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to hear about her husband. Please tell her that I'm thinking of her or something along those lines. Now, I want to flash forward to uh, January of 2020. Yes. Okay. You, by this time, you had already lied to the police on several occasions. Yes. Uh, do you remember some officers with the Highway Patrol coming to speak to you again? Yes. Okay. And did they ask you to go somewhere before they would speak with you? Yes. Where did they t ask you to go? Um, the Boone County office, Sheriff's office, um, James Mushroom. Yes, yeah. And when you got there, did they again ask for your knowledge about this crime? Yes. And uh, let me guess, you didn't tell them what you knew, correct? Correct. Did you continue to lie to them? Yes. And in response to these lies on this occasion, did these officers tell you something that changed your attitude? They, yes. What did they tell you? They told me that um, they knew the whole, or the story, what actually happened. 
um, and that uh, Lindley was going to be in trouble, and that I was possibly going to be in trouble if I didn't tell the truth. And when they said they told, we know the story, they didn't tell you what they knew, they just said that vague statement, correct? Correct. They didn't give you any details? No, sir. And they didn't tell you what you should say? Right. But they told you they knew the story, Lindley was in trouble, and what did they tell you was going to happen to those people that didn't, that were involved that didn't tell the truth? That they were going to jail. And in response to uh, this, these statements, and those weren't the officer's exact words, were they? Uh, not, I don't know. Not probably exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, but that was the gist of it. Right. But they, they were probably being law enforcement, maybe a little bit more colorful? Um, I would say possibly a little, yeah. yeah and, and me and you were having a pleasant conversation. They, right. they, they, they might have been a little bit more angry and stern in their, their delivery than what I'm doing here, correct? Correct. After getting that message from them, did you understand that message? I did. And what did you tell those officers? Uh, that I needed an attorney. And were you given access to your attorney? No. Well, I mean, you were allowed to talk to him eventually, right? I mean, oh, yes. I, yeah, I mean, that, they didn't stab their fingers. Wait, 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 one at a time. I'm sorry. That's your question. You, at some point later that afternoon, evening, you were allowed to speak to your attorney. Yes, sir. They sorry. stopped questioning you. Yes, they did. Uh, and, and your attorney's name is who? Uh, David Dowling. And did the two of you have an in-depth conversation? You and your attorney? Yes, we did. And as a result of that, did your attorney have a, com to your knowledge, have a conversation with somebody? Yes. Who did he speak with? Um, Mr. Uh, Cairo, Cairo, the prosecutor at the time in Montgomery County. And as a result of your attorney speaking with Mr. Caros, did they reach an agreement with respect to, to your, uh, what would happen to you? Yes. And, and tell, is that what we sometimes call a proffer agreement? Yes, sir. Did you know that term before this? No. And, and to tell the jury what, what it is you understand a proffer agreement is. Um, if I tell the truth about what happened in relation to this situation, that I would have immunity. And you, you would not get charged with anything? Correct. And after that agreement between your attorney and Mr. Karos, did you then again sit down with these law enforcement officers? Yes. And was your attorney present this time? He was. Was Mr. Karos there or just the officers? Just the officers. And did you then give them, uh, tell them for the first time what really happened? Yes. And when I say what we're, we're talking about the poisoning? Yes. And the conspiracy leading up to killing and murdering Ben? Right. And, and how that day actually transpired? Yes. And you told them for the first time the two statements Lindley made about who actually pulled the trigger killing her husband? Yes, I did. Judge, I don't have any other questions. Cross examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Shaw, what did um, your mother's father do? My mother's father? Yeah, your, your, your grandfather. Judge, excuse me, I'm, I'm going to object to the relevance. I'm establishing the witness's background. Uh, at this point, objection's over. What, is, uh, what did your grandfather do, Ashley? Um, he was a pastor. Okay. And uh, you, attend, you attended church, did you not? I do, yes. And you attended church in 2017? Yes. You 
told the police that you are in fact very, very religious. Didn't you? Uh, I sure I did. Yeah, I okay. consider myself religious. Yes. And uh, once you got this proffer agreement, you had to tell the truth. Yes. So everything that you claim to have said after the proffer agreement, you would admit to today. Yes. Didn't he, and you told the police that you cannot even watch Dateline because it's too scary? I don't watch Dateline, that's correct. It's too scary? Yes. A nonfiction news store, just to be clear, a nonfiction news show is too scary for Ashley Shaw. When it's in relation to certain things, yes. Now, in 2017, or 2016, you also had a son, correct? I'm sorry, are you asking if he was you born have in a 2016, son. or would I? You have a son. Yes. And that son was alive in 2016. Yes. How old was he in 2016? He would have been four. Okay. And you love your son? Yes. And you're a big part of his life? Yes. What kinds of things do you do with your son, Ashley? Everything. I take care of him. Um, take him to places, and I don't, I don't know the general thing that parents do. <laughs> take him to school and um, take care of him. Would you do anything to jeopardize your son? Clearly, I did. Yes. In two thousand um, seventeen, did you have any criminal history? No. Had you ever committed a violent act before? No. Had you ever been charged with a crime before? No. So you were not about you were not a violent person in 2016 to 2017. <coughs> and I think you also testified at one point, Ashley, that you were not even good friends with Lenny Rennick. I don't know. I'm sorry. Can, you, okay. can I see it? We didn't hang out after work, I guess, if that's what you're meaning. So you didn't socialize with Lenny Rennick? If I did, it was pretty much work-related. Okay. So you were not good friends with her? I guess not, no. Okay. And so... You claim that Lenny Rennick, this woman who you're not very good friends with, you have a son, you have no criminal history, you're not violent, not a violent person, and Dateline is too scary for you. Your boss, oh, and how, how, how was the spa doing in 2017? Not well. Okay. And you had left your former employer, Riversong, because you didn't like working there. That was one of the reasons, yes. So you can think for yourself, right? I can. Okay. So, you're not friends with Lenny Rennick. The spa's not doing great. You leave jobs when you're not happy. You have a five-year-old son. You're not violent. And it's your testimony today, Lenny Rennick walks up to you and out of the clear blue sky asks you, Ashley Shaw, the not violent person who's afraid of Dateline, to commit the most serious crime there is, and you say yes. That's your testimony. Yes, sir. And your reason for this, I think you testified a second ago, is I don't know. Correct? In addition to feeling bad, yes. Oh, feeling bad. So when you feel bad for somebody, you're going to help them murder somebody. The person who has no violent past at all, the person who works at a spa, you're in the relaxation business, right? Correct. You're not a violent person. Does it sound reasonable that somebody like you would really do this? I wish that I could say that it didn't, but I did, so it does to me.
So let's talk about the poisoning. The alleged poisoning. Do you know off the top of your head what 15 Percocets taste like in a protein shake? No, sir. These weren't flavored Percocets, were they? I don't even know if there is flavor. These weren't raspberry Percocets, were they? Have you ever tasted aspirin? Yes. Okay, what does it taste like? Not good. Now, you ground these up in the blender, correct? She ground them up in the oh, blender. Whoever. You, that's what you claim, right? Yes. So you gave the police the blender that has the Percocet residue on it. They, the police have that, right? I'm not sure. Okay. and. You go to your husband or your boyfriend and say, hey, and I think you testified at some point that you never told your, your boyfriend's name, Leandre. Yes. You never told him anything about this, right? Correct? Until you were arrested. Uh, he, he knew they were four, but not what the reason was. So you walk up, and he's not a violent person either, is he? No. He doesn't have any criminal history either. No, sir. So you claim you just walk up to your nonviolent boyfriend and say, give me 15 Percocet, and he says, here you go. Correct? Correct. That's what you claim. Yes, sir. You're not a violent person. And um, then at some point, you're asked where, you got the, where he got the Percocet from. Correct? Correct. And what do you say? I'm a family member, I believe. Who's dead? Yes. So, oh no, we don't. We can't provide a name because, and that person can't confirm it. Just coincidence, the person who would be there to confirm that you got the Percocet is dead. Yes, sir. That's a tough break for you. <clears throat> now, did you ever provide the police with your search history? Your Google search history? I gave them my phone. Did you? Well, you didn't give them the phone you had during the time of the murder, correct? I, I didn't have that phone anymore, no. Okay, what happened to that phone, Ashley? It broke. How did it break? Um, my son dropped it on the ground. Well, I think I had two phones in between there, but one of them my son dropped on concrete. So your son was how old? When he dropped it on the concrete? Yeah. Um, five, maybe. Okay, so he's five years old. He didn't, he dropped it. It fell out of his hand, right? Right. So his hand was about waist, so that, that would have been about waist level? Yeah. Okay, so three feet off the ground? Yes. And you kept the rubber guard on your phone? I don't, at the time I think maybe I did, I'm not sure. I okay, you realize phones don't break when you drop them from three feet off the ground, right? This one did. Um, but they don't, but, but the police don't have your search history, right, of you Googling any of this Percocet stuff, right? I'm sorry, I don't know if they do or not. Okay. Um, you have no information of whether Ben went to the hospital or anything, do, no. do, do you? And you don't know if Ben, you never saw Ben sick, did you? No, sir. So, Ash, so you agreed to kill Ben as a favor, right? I don't know what you mean by favor. You didn't get any money out of this for agreeing to kill Ben. Correct. So it was a favor. Okay. I mean, isn't yeah. that what a favor is? Yes. You would, you would agree that a favor is something you do out of the kindness of your heart with no compensation. Yes. So you agreed to kill Ben as a favor. You claim, right? Yes. And you're a scared person and you couldn't sleep that night when Ben, when you were, when, 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 when Ben might die. You couldn't even sleep that night. You were so scared. Is that what you just testified to? Yes. So it must have been a really big relief when Ben didn't die the, from the poisoning. I don't know. Was it? You don't know? Well, here you are terrified. Weren't you scared you were going to get caught? I think it was more just scared of unknown what was going to happen. Are you afraid of going to prison for the rest of your life? Yes, sir. So weren't you relieved when Ben didn't die and now you guys got away with this? I don't know that that was what went through my head. Wouldn't have reality set in and you'd have kicked yourself and said, God, I'm so stupid. I almost murdered a man and now I got away with it. And God, I'm never going to make that mistake again. Wouldn't that have been the natural re 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 reaction from I somebody in was, your... Yes. Well, not I wish it was. In what kind of world does somebody like you murder somebody, claim to murder somebody as a favor and then not be relieved that it doesn't go through? The source of your fear 
was Ben dying, right? That was, the, that was why you were afraid. Because he was going to die that night. I'm sorry, I, that, I don't was know. Was the source of your fear, was the source of you being afraid, did, did that come from your knowledge Ben was going to die that night? Uh, probably. Possibly, so yes. why weren't you relieved the next morning when he didn't die? I don't know. You don't know, Ashley, because you never tried to poison Ben, right? That's why you don't know. That's not true. So re reality doesn't set in, I guess. And you again, Lenley comes to you again, this person who you're not friends with, spa's failing, and she asks you again to murder Ben. And you say what? Yes. You say yes again. Does that make any sense? No. Does she give you any money? No, sir. And why do you do it? <coughs> why do you agree to kill Ben again? I'm, I don't know. You don't know. Does that make sense, Ashley? That you would try again to kill a man for no re as a favor? I'm sorry, I don't know how to answer that. I don't. You don't have the answer because you never tried to kill Ben. You and Lenly never tried to kill Ben. That's the real answer, isn't it? No. So, Ashley Shaw agrees to kill Ben, not once, but twice, as a favor. And you hatch this plot, and how, how, you said at one point there were something like 10 employees there at, at uh, Essentia Spa? At one time there was, yes. And if there's 10 employees, there's got to be at least a couple of customers, right? Yes, sir. And you guys choose to talk about this all out in the open, in Essentia Spa, in front of everybody? Um, when people were in services, they weren't in the front in the front area. Well, where is there a good place to talk about murder in Essentia Spa, <coughs> Ashley? Where, what, what part of Essentia Spa is a good place to, talk to, to discuss murder? That's private. Well, we were in the front, so clearly it was the front that we discussed. The front of the spa is a private place to discuss murder? Wouldn't if somebody yeah. was going to discuss murder, they would go to a car, they would go someplace where they were positive, nobody was around? Why would you discuss murder in a crowded spa? The door was, why would you discuss murder in a crowded spa? We were, I don't know, people were in rooms, I just, we didn't assume people were going to come out. The door's not locked in a sentient spa, right? The front door? front door? No, sir. Anybody can walk in. Yes. But you claim you discussed murder out at the front desk of this spa. That's what you claim. And that's what you want this jury to believe. Yes. So you go to Michael Humphrey, correct? Yes. Who drives to Michael Humphrey's trailer? I do. Who looks Michael Humphrey up on Casenet? I. I think I do. We both did. How do two I people look, look somebody up on CaseNet? It's not a two-person job, is it? I no. She, she was standing there, but I think I was the one that actually facilitated the search. So yes. you did it. I did. Yes. You looked them up on CaseNet, and you drove to the trailer. Yes. And you're the office manager. Yes. And you're good with money, and you're good with the books. I helped with them. I don't. So you go. To Michael Humphrey's trailer, see him out there. Wh whose idea was it to go back to Michael Humphrey's trailer after he was not there the first time? I'm not 100% positive. That was your idea, wasn't it? I have no idea. So, and Michael Humphrey agrees right then and there to help you two kill Ben too. He said he would think about it. Well, how long did it take him to think about it? A day or a day. He didn't say, "Get away from me, crazy people!" I'm not. I don't want to be a part of that. Right? That's what you claim happened. You claim he 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 agreed pretty quickly. Correct? Yes. So he's doing this as a favor too, and he didn't get any money, right? Not that I know of. So now we've got three favors. You, um, fa the, the favor to help you poison Ben. The second favor to help you try to kill him again, and now Michael Humphrey. Out of the kindness of his heart is doing Lenly a favor by helping her kill Ben too. That that's what you want this jury to believe. Yes.
Now, I think you testified at one point that you had about 10, dis you claim to have about 10 discussions with Len Lee at the spa about murdering Ben, correct? A roundabout number, possibly, yes. And you don't choose to discuss murder in an alley, you don't go to one of your guys' house, you don't go somewhere where you know it's private, you have 10 discussions in front of everybody in the spa about murder. Some of them were in the vehicles. Well, in the spa, though, anybody could be listening. And the second somebody hears you listening, you could go to jail for the rest of your life or prison for the rest of your life, right? Uh, yes, I guess so. And then when you guys decide to hatch this plan, okay, you could have planned this out any way you and Lenley wanted to, correct? I don't, I'm, you're, I don't Okay, know. well, you guys could have tried to, if hypothetically speaking, if you guys are gonna plan to kill somebody, you could have killed, you could have you decided any number of ways to, to murder Ben, right? You could have tried poisoning him again. You could have tried fixing the brakes on his car. You could have tried <coughs> dropping something on him. You had the full array of options available to you, right? I guess, I don't know. Okay, but you guys decide to kill Ben by having Michael Humphrey come to the spa in his own car in broad daylight, right? That's what you guys plan to, ha to happen. Yes. And then where everybody can see Michael Humphrey, Michael Humphrey's car, correct? Yes, sir. And isn't there a condominium or an apartment complex around the spa? Yes. I mean, windows everywhere. So Michael Humphrey decided, so it's your testimony you guys, that's your plan. That's what you guys decide to do to get away with this murder is to have the killer come in broad daylight in front of a condominium complex. Does that sound reasonable to you? Does it sound reasonable or is that what happened? I'm confused on the question. I'll withdraw the question. The question's been withdrawn. Ask your question, counsel. So then, Lenly, also, you also, and I'm assuming when you're planning these things, you're, you're discussing what you want to happen, right? I, the end goal? Yes. Yes. And you don't want to get caught, right? Correct. So part of the plan is a way to not get caught, right? Yes. But yet Michael comes in broad daylight in front of a condominium complex. Yes. And then he drives and stops for gas. Right? That's what she told me. Okay. And um, then she proceeds, him and Michael proceed, to go to the snake facility again in broad daylight where um, uh, Ben is, correct? Yes. And you're supposed to text Ben uh, something about Ben needs to pick the kids up, correct? Yes. So that... Lenly can be having it so that people think Lenly's in Columbia, right? That's correct. Why didn't Lenly just stay in Columbia? Because she went to go kill her husband? No, I know that's what you claim happened, but why, if she's going to kill her husband, why wouldn't she just stay in Columbia and say, Michael, there's Ben, he's in the facility, go take care of him, I'm going to stay here, I'm going to schedule a massage, that way somebody can see me face to face, why wouldn't she just do that? You'll have to ask her, I don't know. Why would she plan for five people to be there when she found Ben? I'm sorry, I don't know that, I'm, you'll have to repeat that question. Well, did you guys discuss the circumstances in which she was supposed to find Ben dead? Did you guys discuss that? Yes. Wouldn't you have wanted there to be not a lot of people there when she found Ben? I didn't know there was a lot of people there. Did you plan for her to scream so loud that a neighbor a half mile away could hear her? Was that part of the plan? I, not that I know of. I have no idea. You don't know, Ashley, because you guys never tried to kill Ben. That's why you don't know the answers to any of these questions, correct? That's not true. Now, I want to talk about...
after the proffer agreement, the immunity deal in which you get nothing, essentially, if you come in here and tell these people that you killed Ben, you get nothing, right? Correct. Okay, now, it may sound like you're incriminating yourself, but you're actually not. By incriminating yourself, you're getting off scot-free, right? Yes. Okay. But you still testify after this immunity deal that Lenly was in shock when she returned to the spa. It seemed like she was... That's how I perceived it. And you said that Lenly was shaking when she got back to the spa. She was. And you said she smelled like cigarettes when she got back to the spa. She did. And you said that she was eerily calm when she got back to the spa. I don't know if I said it that way. Can you show me, please? I'll have to get back to you. Um, and she needed you to scrub her off, or she asked you to scrub her off. That, that's what you claimed to, ha to have happened, right? Yes, sir. And she needed you to dress her, correct? I don't know that I dressed her. I don't recall it. And she ends up putting these clothes in a box in her office, according to you, correct? Yes. Did the police ever ask you if Lenly had any blood on her? Um, I believe so. And what was your answer? No, she did not. ever asked Ashley Shaw if Lenley had any blood on her? I'm sorry, you're Ashley Shaw. Do you know if the police ever asked Rachel Hunt if Lenley had ever had any blood on her? I don't know. Do you know what Rachel Hunt's answer was to that question? I don't know. Now, you said that Michael Humphrey was part of the Mexican Mafia. Is that correct? No, that's not what I said. Or that's what Lenley claimed, right? know that his family knew of someone that was possibly in the Mexican Mafia, not that he himself was in the Mexican Mafia. If he was, I have no, no knowledge of that. That wouldn't have anything to do with Michael Humphrey just recently denying being a part of the Mexican Mafia, would it? I didn't know that he denied that, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so... point, I want to take a break and, 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 and catch up a little bit. So, Lenly tells you that her and Ben are having trouble, right? Yes, sir. And you agree to do a favor for her for no compensation, right? Correct. Then you agree to do a favor for her, a second favor for no compensation, right? Right? What was the other favor, I'm sorry? To murder Ben or whatever. Okay. For, 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 yes. for, 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 for no compensation. Yes. Then Michael agrees to, right? According to her, yes. Okay. Um, and uh, you and Lenly make, say all of this out in the open, or, or, or at the spa, right? Can you rephrase that, I'm sorry? You and, you and Lenly and Michael plan all of this in a public place. A sensuous spa, right? I did not plan this with Michael, no. Well, you and Lenley talked about it at the, at the spa, correct? Yes. And Michael came to the spa, right? Yes, sir. And he was seen with you too, right? Seen by... I don't, I'm, Whoever was at the spa, correct? I'm not sure if anyone saw him. Well, didn't you guys jump his car one time? A different, in a different day than him being at the spa, yes. Weren't there four of you that helped jump Michael Humphrey's car? There was four of us in the vehicle, yes. Aren't those facts, Ashley, 
more consistent with you helping Lenny Rennick go to confront Ben about a divorce than they are going to confront Ben or going to kill Ben and murder him? Aren't the facts you just admitted to discussing these things out in the open, all of these people agreeing to things with, for, 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 for no compensation out of the kindness of their heart, aren't those facts more consistent with a favor that's not illegal than it, they are with a favor that is the most serious crime in our criminal code? Are you asking me about yes, it with Yes, I'm you? asking you that. I never had a conversation with Ben about a divorce, no. Now, eventually, an officer comes to the spot in June and asks and questions you in his police car, right? Yes, sir. And you tell him you don't know anything about this murder, correct? Yes. And you told him that because you told Lenly, well, let me back up a little bit. You talked to the AG's office in February of 2020, correct? I, I'm really sorry, I don't know. That's AG's. okay. I'm sorry. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yeah, you don't have to ask me that. Okay. Have you seen that document before, Ashley? So. Okay. I don't and understand. did I not show you that document at a deposition? I don't recall. I'm sorry. Can you please read the front of that cover to the jury? State of Missouri versus Lindley Rennick. Okay. What else does it say? Ashley Shaw, May 25th of 2021. And you were deposed that day? Um, Yes, sir, I guess. Okay, and your attorney David Dallin was with you that day? Yes. Do you remember me showing you a document and asking you if everything in that document was true? Yes, sir. And is there an exhibit tab on that deposition that says A? Yes, sir. And could you open up that pamphlet and, and tell me what document is exhibit A? That. That's the document I just showed you, right? Well, the first page of it, yes. Okay. I mean, there's other pages, but there's only a tab on the first page. Okay. Did you ever testify that Michael Humphrey told you and Lenley not to tell once he came back to the uh, spa? I'm not sure. Does that appear to be the same document that I handed you or be from the Attorney Gen Gen General's office? Um, it's one of the pages on it, yes. Okay. Does that, um, there, there's a highlighted portion on there that I highlighted. Does um, that assist your memory and um, uh, remembering whether or not Michael Humphrey told you not to tell, you and Lenny not to tell? I don't believe that he ever told me that. I think that she said that he told her that. I don't know. Okay. Sure. Isn't that written in there that you said that Michael Humphrey told you not to tell? That's what they, their interpretation was, yes. There was a, several, I don't know, yes. It isn't this. This says Ashley Shaw meeting on 2720, does it not? Um, on 228, or 27, yes, sorry. 2720. Yes, sir. February 7th, 2020. Yes, sir. Correct.
And that's the same date on that document that's on your deposition, correct? At the top? In that page, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And at your deposition, I asked you if there was anything about that document that there were any discrepancies. Do you remember that? I don't remember that whole okay. document. No. I want you to read page seven. I remember a document, but I don't remember it being that many pages. I want you to read page seven of your deposition, Ashley. What part of it, sir? Read the whole page. Um, question? Don't um, read it out loud. I'm sorry. Review it oh, to yourself. Oh. Yeah, you're, you put an exhibit on the page that you just showed me. And okay, and you found two discrepancies in that, um, in that document, correct? Yeah. Okay, and none of those discrepancies were that you wanted to correct was Michael Humphrey warning you and Lenley not to tell, right? Correct. Why would Michael Humphrey have to threaten you and Lenley Rennick not to tell if you're all part of a conspiracy? Why would he have to do that? I don't know. The reason is because he killed Ben himself. Isn't that true? That's why he threatened you and Lenley not to tell. Isn't that correct? I don't know, sir. And then... You told Lenley, we have to cover this up because Michael Humphrey's going to kill us, right? No. And you told Lenley, we have to cover this up because the police are going to arrest you and me because we sent Michael Humphrey out. They're going to blame us and they're going to arrest us, so we have to cover this up. That's what you told Lenley, right? No. And you told her that your mother was married or dated a cop, isn't that correct? She was married to a police officer for me. And you said, I know what I'm talking about because my mom was dating a cop and they're going to arrest you, correct? My mom has been married in for over 15 years. That's Lenny sure. Rennick wanted to go to the police, but you talked her out of it, correct? No, sir. And in fact, you were so enthusiastic about covering this up that you were talked to on 622 by Devin Faust and asked about Lenley and your involvement in this murder, and what was your statement to Devin Faust on 622 in his, in his car? I would need to see it, I don't know. Well, did you say Lenley killed Ben? No, sir. Did you say you killed Ben? No. You denied it, right? Yes. Okay, you denied it convincingly, evidently, because he never came back and followed up with you, correct? Apparently, yeah. Okay, he did not so come back no. you were convincing, and it was a lie, right? Yes. You were, con you were able to be convincing to Devin Faust on that occasion because you weren't involved in a murder. You were just covering up a murder, and that's not really a serious crime, right? That's why you were able to be convincing, correct? It's not true. Well, if you were involved in a murder in an off and you're not violent and you don't have a criminal history, if you were really involved in this murder and that officer was asking you questions about your involvement in, in the murder, don't you think you would have been somebody in your position would have been a little bit nervous about that? I was extremely nervous. Well, not, not, not enough for Devin Faust, a seasoned homicide investigator to pick up on evidently because he never followed up again. You'll have to talk with him. I don't know. I'm sorry. Well, they, well did, did Devin Faust ever say anything like, Ashley, I can tell you're nervous right now? Did he ever say anything like that? I don't remember. I'm, I don't think so. I don't know. And then on 10-6, you were talked to again, right? Yes, sir. And this time you were in an actual police station. Troop F in Jefferson City or... I think it was, right? No, sir. Where, where was it? Columbia Police Department. Okay, right so now there. you are in a police station being questioned about a murder, correct? Uh, yes. And that was by Corporal Haslag, I believe, right? I don't know the name. I'm and sorry. he asked you about the poisoning. And you remember what you said to him? I remember him asking me, yes. You remember what you said to him? I don't want to say exactly what I said since I'm under oath. You'll have to read it to me. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Does that help assist your memory, page 17? Do you want me to read out loud or to myself? Uh, read it to yourself and tell me if it assists your memory. I told him that a client brought in a protein shake. And it, Ben was never poisoned. That's what you told uh, Corporal Hasselag, right? You said we all got sick. And you were able 
able to say that in a way that did not cause Corporal Haslag to follow up or call you a liar or anything like that, correct? He did not. He believed you, right? I don't know. So how are you, somebody with no criminal history, who's not violent, able to be so calm when you're being questioned about murders that you evidently claim to be involved in? How is that, Ashley? I don't know. The reason is because you were never involved in a murder. That's the reason why you're able to be calm. And the worst that can happen to you if they catch you lying is you get a misdemeanor for hindering, right? You probably looked that up, right? No, but I wish that was true. I wish that that was the case. Well, after you and Lendley remained friends after the spot closes, right, in September? Uh, yes. I think, I think you call the police because Brandon Blackwell, her new boyfriend, is threatening to kill himself because Lindley won't call him back or return, or return his phone calls, right? That's not exactly how it happened, well, but yes. you called the police on Brandon Blackwell because he was threatening to kill himself, or Lindley told you he was, was going to... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll back up. Ashley, you called the police to report Brandon Blackwell was suicidal. Yes. This was after the spa closed. I believe so. Yes, it was. So you and Lenley, you're evidently somebody Lenley trusts, continuing some sort of social relationship. I, I thought we weren't friends. I don't know how to answer that. I don't. Yes, she did. But well, pretend <laughs> I'm not the prosecutor for a second okay. and, 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 and tell the truth, okay? You, you she were... communicated with me, yes. Okay. So... You guys are still friendly after the spa closes. Then you go on with your life, correct? I did, yes. You get a new job, right? Yes, sir. So you go to work for Senior Benefit Services, correct? Correct. And you don't tell anybody that you were involved in a murder, correct? Correct. Not your boyfriend, not your mom, nobody? Correct. Okay. And you're able to just work like nothing happened, right? Correct. Okay. And then the officer, I think, asked you if you like working for Senior Benefit Services, and what did you tell him? Yes. I believe. I'm sure I did. And... Uh, You were working on becoming a licensed agent in something. What was that? I was a licensed. I am a licensed. In what? Uh, in health insurance and life. And uh, you were raising your son at the same time too, right? I do. Yes. And you yeah. discussed with these officers, who, by the way, were transporting you to a police station to talk to you again about a murder, that you like playing soccer, basketball, and baseball with your son, right? Yes. And then in 2009. 2019, you get married. Yes, sir. And that's a really happy occasion for you, isn't it? It was, yes. There it is, yes. Isn't that your wedding photo? It is. Is that a fair and accurate representation of what you and your bridesmaids look like on your wedding day? Yes. Permission to publish, Your Honor. Well, you got to offer it. Oh, first. I moved. I moved, but I've marked uh, eight acts into evidence. It, what is it? It's a. Uh, Exhibit what? It, well, it's eight X's. I had to do the letters. X eight times. Yes. Any objection? No. Okay. Uh, X times eight is admitted. I'm just going to walk up and show the jury. Our permission to publish, Your Honor? You don't have to ask me. If it's okay. in, you can show it to me. So, you don't seem to be really scared when you're getting married and when you're getting your health insurance license and when you're working for senior benefit services, right? 
Right. And you don't seem to be really scared when you're playing basketball and soccer and baseball with your five-year-old son, right? That's correct. The reason you're not scared, Ashley, is because you and Lenny never murdered Ben, right? That's why you're not scared. Correct? That's not true. No. So now let's move ahead to 116. Where something happened to you on the morning of 116. Tell me what tell the jury what that was. Um the the investigators approached me when I was getting out of my car. Okay. And what did you think they were there for? Well, at first I didn't know. Who they you didn't were. know. Yeah. You didn't know why they were there. There was nothing on your mind that would have made you scared about, about why a police officer was coming to question you, right? Well, I didn't know they were officers. No, not until they told me they looked like regular So people. they take you to a police station in Columbia? Uh, yes, sir. And that's when you tell them about your son, right? In the car, I think. And I you would... tell them about working for Senior Benefit Services? Yes, sir. And you tell them you love working for Senior Benefit Services? Yes. And you tell them you got married. I think I did, yeah. And you tell them you're planning a honeymoon. Yes. And you tell them life is great, right? Yes. Because it was great, correct? Yes, sir. Um, nothing was on your mind at that point. There was nothing preoccupying you at that point in time in your life, right? Before they came to meet with well, me? Well, while, while you're in the car. No, I was pretty nervous. <laughs> You were, you were so nervous, but you were still able, able to talk about all the wonderful things you were doing in your life to two police officers? Yeah, I think I asked them if I thought that it was a cold case, or I think that I pushed a little further on why they were approaching well, me. Well, maybe, I don't And the prosecutor asked you, in his way, what the office, well, first of all, the officer asked you, um, I think it was Nathaniel Schaefer, does that sound correct? I believe so, yes. And he asked you if you had anything to do with, uh, or if Lenley, excuse me, had anything to do with Ben's death. And you know what you, and, and what did you tell Nathaniel Schaefer? Uh, no, I didn't know. I would like to think not, right? That's what you said. Okay. Well, I mean, okay, is that um, what, what you said? If you have documentation showing that that's correct, then I, that's probably right. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't remember exactly what I said. Please review to yourself the very top of that page. Then yes, you're right, that's what I said. Now you're in a police station, and you say, again, I think this is the fourth time that Lenny Rennick had nothing to do with this. That's what you, that's what you told the police? Yes. What did Trooper, tell the jury what Trooper Schaefer really told you after you said that. I don't know what you mean, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Review that document to yourself. Does that sound... Does that help assist you, what Trooper Schaefer really said? Uh, yes. Didn't Trooper Schaefer... Do you want me to read it? Sure. He said, the reason we're here and the reason that you're here is you have been implicated in being a part of Ben's death, and I want you to hear me out before you say anything. Further? Keep going. I said, okay. And he said... We've talked to the prosecutor, and the prosecutor is willing, if you are 100% honest, and give information in this homicide that helps us solve it. Basically, he's willing to work with you. Oh, sorry. Um, prosecutor's willing to help. Uh, oh. Prosecutor um, is willing, if you are 100% honest, and give information in this homicide that helps us solve it. Basically, he's willing to work with you. What else does he say? Otherwise, you would be accessory to first-degree murder, and first-degree accessory two is the exact same charge as first-degree murder. Keep okay. going. Um, we're here because we have information that you helped plan, and you actually took part in an attempt on Ben's life before Ben was actually killed. 
So I just want to put that out there and go back and let you be 100% honest. Keep going. On what happened because we know a lot of what happened. Keep going. There are arrests are going to be made today. People are going to be in jail for first degree murder. We've got the warrants typed up and ready to be sent out. So basically now is the time. You're either, continue? You may continue? Yes. Uh, you're either on Team Lindley or you're on team, of, team Missouri, and Lindley's team is going to jail. Keep going? Or, no? Well, what are they going to jail for, Ashley? First degree murder. Okay. So, everybody on Team Lindley is going to jail for first degree murder. That's what they told you, right? Yes. And do you remember testifying in a deposition that when you heard that, your brain was totally gone? I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, you love your son, right? Very much so. You would lie, I think, you would lie to be free and not be charged with murder, correct? No. Up until that point, you were on Team Lenley. You were saying things that were helpful to Lenley. Oh, yes, yes. You're on Team Lenley. What happens to people on Team Lenley, Ashley? According to, the, according to Trooper Schaefer, what happens to people on Team Lenley? They're going to jail. So you don't want to be on that team, right? No, sir. And so what did you do? You switched teams. I, yeah. I told my story, the story, yes. The truth. And you were offered a proffer agreement. That's the word that the state came up with, proper. I don't know what it means, but I guess it means that you agree to be on Team Missouri and help them get a conviction. In exchange for that, you get total immunity, correct? Yes, sir. And what would happen, did your attorney tell you, Ashley, what was going to happen if you didn't join Team Missouri? Um, that we would go to trial, it would proceed. We would go to trial or it would. I would get... I don't know. I would get charged. I don't know the exact terms. I'm sorry. And where were you? In Physically. In, in Montgomery County Jail. And what were you wearing when you signed this proper agreement? Um, jail clothes. So if you didn't agree to this proper agreement, you were never leaving that jail cell, possibly, even if you were innocent. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the officer never said, Ashley, here's the evidence we have that you're guilty, right? They just said you were implicated. Correct? Correct. So you could be innocent, and it didn't matter to Trooper Schaefer, because if you're innocent, he's still putting you through the ordeal of being accused of murder. Right? I, yes, I believe so. That would work on anybody. You could go down to downtown Columbia right now, grab a guy, and say, if you don't join Team Missouri, we are going to put you through the ordeal of being charged with first-degree murder. Maybe he gets off and he, after five years of sitting in jail. But he would say anything to avoid that, right? I, I don't know, sir. I'm sorry. I think you do know, Ashley, because that's what's going on here, isn't it? No. That's what's going on here. What did you tell your son? Aren't you tired of everybody looking at you as a murderer when you really aren't a murderer? Aren't you tired of that? I don't know who's looking at me. I don't know. I don't care what people think, I guess. Aren't you tired of this charade of going around and telling people you and Lenley killed Ben when you didn't and you're just saying this because you don't want to go to prison and be accused of murder? Don't you want to come clean now? That's not true, sir. I wish, I very much wish that was the truth. Well, why then would you do all this for no reason? Do you think Nathaniel Schaefer cares about the truth? Do you think somebody who cares about the truth would ever say that to a witness in a police station? It's not my place to judge how he feels. I'm sorry, I don't know. I said it's not my place to judge how he feels. I don't know. I have nothing for you. No, Your Honor. Nothing? Nothing. Okay, may this witness be finally excused? We may recall, Your Honor. You're subject to recall, but you can step down. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Let's take a break, folks. Again, remind you of what you were told. Uh, I mean, just don't talk about it and don't watch TV or anything, okay? You know what I'm talking about.
You can go with the bailiff. Court will be in recess until the bailiff tells me different. 